Traditional music should find its strongest expression in the Gaeltacht, but like all areas of the west of Ireland, the Donegal Gaeltacht has been short of people to keep up the musical tradition. Now, Francie Mooney, a local teacher, is helping to revive traditional music among the younger generation, so that, once again, they will be a group of musicians to celebrate on public occasions and fashiona, and indeed to ensure that there's enough music to go around to entertain the expected increase in tourists. The Donegal Gaeltacht is the largest of all, with a population, according to the Gaeltar report, of 24,000. It's rugged, its climate is poor, and, like other Gaeltacht areas, nearly half of the population are under 14 or over 65, that is, not in the fully productive age groups. Although Donegal Gaeltacht shares these problems with other Irish-speaking areas, it has its own special characteristics, as Dr Eileen Kane an American anthropologist explains. There's been a history of seasonal migration from parts of Donegal, not from all of Donegal. Uh, the southwest, for example, has not had this tradition. And people have had the experience of going away to uh, Glasgow, to parts of Scotland, for the potato harvests, for doing what was called danger work, and coming back, bringing back with them different kinds of experience, but having the potential for coming back without the aura of failure, which was true in other areas of the country. People in other areas of the country, uh, in western areas rather, would leave home with the idea of making a success of themselves and coming back only to exhibit that success. Um, if they came home otherwise, it was a sign of failure. Donegal men in the past put their roots down bit by bit. The husband, after marriage, went to work in Scotland and returned the first year with enough money to build one room. Thereafter, the couple added on rooms as the family grew, until you have this very common design of house built in a line over a period. But the important point is that they did come back and they did put down roots. And they didn't change, keeping themselves to themselves in Scotland, drinking in their own pubs and using a spokesman for their needs. Even today, they might adopt modern dress and customs, but don't stop speaking Irish. The Gaeltara Aaron report envisages a drop of 15% in those engaged in farming in the next four years and it recommends consolidation of farms to provide bigger units than the present five to 15 acres common in the Donegal Gaeltacht. While the climate isn't suitable for many crops grown elsewhere, intensive farming such as Sean O'Brien carries on, he has up to 300 pigs on a five acre farm, can be developed. And of course, the hardy mountain sheep are a standby. Common market. Well, what kind of farming can you do? Well, uh... There's good enough mountains here for sheep and uh, those pigs. Well, you have you have what two or three between two and three hundred pigs. Yes. And how many acres have you? About five acres of land. But you don't need much room for like, three hundred no, pigs. No, enough land to get the to get the, the, the manure spread on. That's all I want. Would you advise uh, young people in the Gaelic like, who have any land to go into the same kind of business? Oh, well, I uh, would it uh, look good to start two or three years, but maybe 1942 would not be, 72 might not be so good just. 
But for the moment, you're happy. Oh, yes, the moment I'm happy, here. Yeah. The cost of growing vegetables under glass is a prohibitive factor where the climate is so harsh and unsuitable, but special incentive schemes for horticulture have been suggested in the report. But the bulk of any population growth in the Gaeltacht must come through absorbing those who leave the countryside and agriculture into new factories. At present, there are 600 employed in manufacturing in the Donegal Gaeltacht, many of these in the industrial estate at Bonbeg. The biggest problems in relation to industry are those arising from the differences between the way of life and the habits of the people of the Gaeltacht and those who want to help from outside. The Gaeltacht doesn't pose peculiar problems. There's nothing unusual about uh, uh, economic development in the Gaeltacht in that sense. We should look at it from the other point of view, that most of the managerial techniques uh, were originally developed in the United States and Britain. And associated with these managerial techniques naturally were cultural accretions from the United States and Britain, which were thought to be automatically associated with um, success in industrial development. Most people in the Gaeltacht historically have had experience of working on marginal farms which did not immediately respond to increased investment of time and money. Therefore, there would not naturally uh, be this relationship in people's minds between uh, a unit, a specific unit of time and a specific unit of money. There is also um, a different concept of the uh, working unit or the working party, cooperation. Uh, the cooperative unit was very important in the west of Ireland. Uh, the cooperative unit is not important as such amongst individuals in the modern factory. The structure uh, provides for the cooperation. Individuals are not expected to lay down tools when they see a workmate in difficulties and go over to give him a hand. They are not expected when they have free time on their hands to take up a second occupation in the factory. They are expected to do a specific job throughout the day. This is uh, a concept which is alien to the uh, experience of the Gaeltacht worker of the past, and this initially gives him some difficulties. Gaeltara errands and others' difficulties in bringing industry to the Gaeltacht have arisen mainly along these lines. For instance, a manager of any factory employing girls finds they will work overtime only to help him out, not for money. Incentive schemes based on competition and individual productivity don't work because they would rather help each other out than compete. In the case of men, promotion to a desk is not an incentive because office work is not regarded as work. So, the manager who has the highest motives and ideals often ends up at loggerheads with his work people. This is one of the fundamental problems which any development scheme will have to think deeply about, not merely whether the manager has enough Irish to communicate.